Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to do some Gauss's surface problems using objects with variable charge densities. Notice here we have, we're trying to find the electric field inside and outside a sphere that has a charge density as such. Now that would indicate that there's charge all throughout the sphere, which means it's not a conductor. If it's a conductor, the charge would reside at the surface of the sphere only and there would be no charge inside the sphere, so therefore no electric field inside the sphere. But in this case, since it's distributed, not uniformly, but as a function of radius, notice when r becomes zero, little r would be the radius of, the, uh, of where the charge resides. If that's zero, there would be zero charge. So zero charge inside and more and more charge density as you go further out to the surface of the sphere. When little r becomes big r, big r would then be the radius of the sphere, then this becomes 1, so the charge density at the surface would be this much, the charge density at the r equals 0 would be 0, and would increase as a function of r squared from the inside to the outside of the sphere. Alright, so let's draw the sphere. So here's the sphere. And uh, let's say that we want to first start with finding the, the electric field inside the sphere, so we want to draw a Gaussian surface. And let's say that the Gaussian surface has a radius A from the center of the sphere. So now, how do we solve that problem? Well, just like before, we use the equation, the surface integral of E dot dA. So that would be a small little area element on the Gaussian surface. Remember, the Gaussian surface is a spherical shaped object, right? It just fits around the inner portion of the, of the sphere. A, of course, could be anything you like it to be, very small, very big, anywhere from zero to the edge of the sphere. The radius of the sphere is r, that's a constant, and the distance from the center of the sphere anywhere to the inside or outside of the sphere would be small letter r, would be the radial distance from the center. Uh, let's say that if we want a small little volume element, what we would do is we'd say, okay, I draw a very small little thin shell of radius small r and thickness, the thickness of the shell right here, the thickness would be dr, right? That would be the thickness of the shell. And so that's how you find the volume of that small little shell, and you'll see in just a moment why we need it. But Gauss's law says that the surface integral of E dot dA must equal the charge inside the Gaussian surface divided by epsilon sub naught. Remember, Q inside simply means all of the charge inside the Gaussian surface, which is a spherical shaped a shell there that drawn in red. Okay, well, since there is perfect symmetry here, as far as in radial, uh, in, in angle, the electric field should be the same magnitude, no matter which direction we point, we point outward, top, bottom, left, right, anywhere we like, on the surface, the electric field will be the same magnitude and pointing radially outward. So therefore, we can take the left side and write it as E dot the total area of the Gaussian surface and that should equal Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught and the area of the Gaussian surface of course can be written as 4 pi a squared small a is of course the radius of the Gaussian surface and that would be the equation of the surface of a sphere and that equals Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. So the only thing left to do to solve the problem is to find the charge inside. How do we do that? Well, first we want to express this in terms of a small dv. It's a small little volume element. Let me make that a little bit shorter there. I need the room. And so the volume of a spherical shell would be the surface area times the thickness. So it would be 4 pi r squared. That would be the surface area of the little volume element times the thickness dr. That would be the volume of that. And how much charge would reside in there? Well, we can say that the charge, the dq inside this, the shell here, is equal to the charge density, rho sub naught, times r squared over large r squared, that would be the charge density, times the dv, dv, which is equal to the charge density, times 4 pi r squared, times dr. And then if we simplify that, we now have an expression for the charge inside that little volume element. So it would be rho sub naught, 4 pi divided by big R squared, 
and that we have remaining would be r to the fourth dr. Okay, and the only variable part, of course, would be r to the fourth dr there. And that would be the charge inside this little volume element, thin little shell inside the Gaussian surface. So to find all of the charge, q inside, that would be the integral of all the dqs, and we're going to integrate from r equals 0 to r equal a. So r equals 0 to r equal a. And that would be equal to, let's take all the constants out, that would be rho sub naught, 4 pi divided by r squared, times integral from 0 to a of r to the fourth dr. I'm not writing very good r's there. There, that's better. All right. That's an easy integral to do. So this would be equal to rho sub naught times 4 pi divided by r squared times r to the fifth over 5. And the limits of integration would be from 0 to the Gaussian surface a. When we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. When we plug in the upper limit, we get a to the fifth. So this is equal to uh, 4 pi rho sub naught. I put the 4 pi first times a to the fifth divided by 5 r squared. And that is the charge inside the Gaussian surface all the way out to distance a away from the center. If a is small, there'll be a little bit of charge. If a is big, there'll be a lot of charge. All right. So now we can go ahead and complete the problem. So now we write that e times 4 pi a squared is equal to q inside, which is 4 pi rho sub naught a to the fifth divided by 5 r squared. And then we can simplify things a little bit. We have a 4 pi here, we have a 4 pi there. a squared, this becomes a cubed instead of a to the fifth. And so the, the magnitude of the electric field is equal to rho sub naught a to the third divided by 5 r squared. And if we now want to write that in a vector format, we can write that e as a function of r is equal to rho sub naught a cubed divided by 5 r squared. And actually we should make this a function of a because we can, we can actually put the Gaussian surface at any distance r equals a. And that of course would be really outward r like that. Or should I put a outward? Well, that's a little awkward, isn't it? So since I'm going to rewrite it just to make it so that's not as confusing, so now I'm just going to use the variable r inside the sphere. So we can say that e as a function of r, because r is, all, after all, the variable is equal to rho sub naught r cubed divided by 5 r squared in the radial direction. There, that would be a better way of writing it, less confusing. So r is the variable out anywhere inside the Gaussian surface. And um, big R is the radius of the sphere. And that would be the electric field anywhere inside the sphere. All right. So what would be the electric field strength outside the sphere? Well, what we can do is we can draw a Gaussian surface way out there. And now I'm going to make my A equal to this A right there. So it's always it's nice to do the problem letting the radius of the Gaussian surface be a different variable like that. Makes it cleaner. So to do the problem again, we end up with the same equation, right? So we can say, and now let me use a different color. Let me use blue. So we say the integral of E dot dA is equal to Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. So now we're going to do the outside. And the the only difference is that the e dot dA, so we have e times dA would be 4 pi a squared. Okay, again, it's the surface area of the Gaussian surface is equal to q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. Oh, am I forgetting an epsilon sub naught here? I certainly am. I can't forget my epsilon sub naught because I have q inside, but I still need my epsilon sub naught, my epsilon sub naught, my epsilon sub naught and my epsilon sub naught. Can't forget that. That's an important constant. All right. So again, we're going to do that here, but now we want to find the Q inside for the charge that's inside the Gaussian surface, meaning the Q in the entire sphere. All of the, Q, all of the charge inside the sphere will now be in the Gaussian surface, not just a portion of out to here, but now the whole charge inside. So here, Q inside is equal to the integral from r equals 0 
to R equal R. We can only go out to R. We can go out to A because there's no charge outside the sphere here. And so that would be equal to, oh, getting ahead of myself, of all the dQs. So this is equal to the integral. And let me take the constants out just like I did before. So rho sub naught 4 pi divided by R squared. Right? I'm still doing the same thing. I'm taking a small little volume element, dV. I'm multiplying times the, uh, the dQ, which is right here. And so when I do that, I get the same integral. But now my limits are going to be from 0 to R of R to the fourth dr. So I get the very same integral. But I'm only integrating out to the surface, the edge of the sphere, not all the way to the Gaussian surface. So this is equal to rho sub naught times 4 pi divided by r squared times r to the fifth over 5, evaluated from 0 to r. And now this becomes 4 pi rho sub naught r to the fifth divided by 5r squared. And now we can see that we simplify the r's. This cancels out, and this becomes r to the third. So write this as 4 pi rho sub naught r to the third divided by 5. So this is the charge inside the whole sphere. And that will then go into our equation right here. So we get E times 4 pi a squared equals Q inside, which is 4 pi rho sub naught r cubed divided by 5. And I can't forget my epsilon sub naught like I did over there. Got to include that. Simplifying, the 4 pi's cancel out, but notice that the a squared does not cancel out. We'll go down here. So e is going to be equal to rho sub naught r to the third divided by 5 epsilon, oop, 5 a squared. Can't forget my a squared. Oop. 5 a squared epsilon sub naught. And if we want to then write it into a vector format, so let me come over here. Oop, there we go. So I'm going to write this as a vector now, just like I did over here. So the electric field as a function of radius is going to equal rho sub naught r cubed divided by 5. And instead of writing a squared, I'll write r squared epsilon sub naught times the r unit vector. And that would be outside the sphere, while here this would be inside the sphere. Okay. That's how we do that. So quick recap. To find the charge inside, we do definitely need to integrate. You need to find a small little dV. You need to find the charge density. You then multiply the dV times the charge density, and the dV is expressed like that. Multiply them together, and this then represents the dQ, a small little amount of charge inside a spherical shell. We then integrate that from r equals 0 to the edge of the Gaussian surface. When it's inside, we go from 0 to a over here, so you don't include all of the charge, only the charge from there to there. And then if you do the Gaussian surface outside the sphere, then you integrate the charge all the way out to the edge of the sphere because you want to get all the charge inside the Gaussian surface. Now, as a test, these two equations, these two equations should be equal to each other at the surface. If they're not equal to each other at the surface, we made a mistake somewhere. So, if R is equal to big R, that I should get the same equation as I have over there. Is that indeed the case? Well, if little r becomes big R, r cubed divided by r squared to get r in the numerator. Here, if little r is big R, r cubed divided by r squared to get r in the numerator, everything else being the same, you can see that when you set little r equal to big R, both equations are identical. Therefore, we know that the, problem, that the answers are probably correct. And that's how we do that.